Hey guys, Barry with here. Uh, Barry's A Track and Classic Car Radio Repair, and today's demonstration is on a unit from uh, it's for Mike uh, from South Pasadena, California. This is uh, nearly identical to the '69 Chrysler chrome-faced AMA track units, uh, but this is actually a '68. Uh, now there are several variations on this nearly identical model with the chrome face, uh, and the the big difference between all of them is not only the uh, the nomenclature on the panel, some say Dodge solid state, some say Chrysler solid state, there's like five or six different uh, pieces of nomenclature they use for this front uh, deal here. But also, although uh, the front looks identical, the gearing between the volume and the tuning uh, mechanisms are different uh, on the 68s uh, compared to the 69 units. And uh, this one uses this weird little toothed belt that's uh, actually basically identical to a timing belt, except that it's only about about that big around and it goes around that volume control and uh, as far as I know uh, mine is the only shop that has that part as a replacement part because it's not available as a replacement part I had to do quite a bit of research to find uh, that that identical belt that fits in this uh, that fits in this position so anyway we've got that problem fixed and we're gonna go and turn it on uh, this is a converted uh, Chrysler AM a track it now has FM it has greatly increased audio power uh, better uh, better FM reception and station locking and it has my special my extra special job on the a track which is my basically my flagship development uh, it's got my new a track preamp board which is designed to bring out the brightness that have been lost and possibly never even was on the a track tape to begin with so let's go ahead and turn this unit on I've got it set to FM at the moment and we're gonna run it through all its cool little paces and make sure everything's working properly before we send it back to the customer Got it set to FMs, and let's just run it all the way down the dial and see how many FM stations we can pick up with this thing. Needless to say, we're reading an AM dial for FM stations, so you just you just kind of get used to where it is. That was five years ago. At the time. So you about 10 so far for McFarland in case you can't see the dial it's right about there return postage extra now you can start to see it Muller will try to justify. It's about 25 so far. Okay, so about 26, 27 FM stations. Pretty good for this area. Now we're going to flip it to AM. We do that uh, since this is converted and there's not an original AM FM switch. We switch between AM and FM by turning the unit off and then right back on within about half a second. So here we go. We're going to go off on. Okay, now you're hearing the AM stuff. So let's uh, tune in the two or three AM stations we get here. Make sure that works. Will charges be brought against McCabe There's and one. Comey and two, and then we get another one a little farther up the dial. Ten games. Okay, and they get back and there's the seems like every time I get the station in it's a baseball game Okay, now let's go ahead and try the a track uh, now once again uh, prepare yourself because uh, I claim to be uh, the most uh, rec Recommended and highly respected and knowledgeable a track technician in the world I'm about to prove that uh, you're gonna hear the brightest sound that you've ever heard out of an a track And the thing to keep in mind is you can always back off the tone uh, to tame that tape down because a lot of 8-track tapes, so the reason I developed my preamp is because a lot of 8-track tapes just don't have the, the drive and the fidelity to drive uh, the, the conversion electronics to their full potential. So here we go. Okay. Well, here I, I get this big dramatic lead up and now we're at the end of the song. <laughs> okay. 
So let's <coughs> we'll just let it start. Uh, we'll just let it advance to the next song. Here we go. I tell my blues they mustn't show, but soon these tears are bound to flow. Okay, switch tracks a bunch of times. That's with the tone control all the way up, and it's a little on the shrill side. And it might even be more so with the smaller car speakers. So if that's the case, just back off the tone. And now it sounds more like an 8-track tape. You know, this thing, I really can't crank it up more than about here. It's This is not nearly even close to half its uh, volume range. And it's raining. That's a pretty beautiful sounding A track. Okay, pull our tape on. Radio comes right back. And, uh, oh, we got a little bonus here. We uh, we have a line input. I don't know if the customer requested it or not, but uh, if in doubt, go ahead and install one. So let's just test that real quick. And now uh, one more. Let's go ahead and bring our output level meters in the picture so we can make sure both speakers are working. And that with the balance control is working properly. And we also have a front rear fader that you didn't know about, so we're going to test that too. Okay, let's flip this over to a music so there's continuous sound. Sounds like we're on AM, so let's go to FM. Something with a little bit more continuous sound on it, so we can see these meters. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we're going to work our, our, our balance control. Left only. Right only. Now even this so-called active music is starting to crap out a little bit. Okay, here we go. Okay, now we're going to activate our front rear fader. Where in the world is the front rear fader on an AM radio? Well, it's in the tone control. Uh, by turning the tone control twice upwards, you're going to you're going to activate your front rear fader, and then you can use that tone control to adjust your your front rear speaker balance. So here we go. We're going to activate it right now. Let's turn the iris down on our unit. Trying out the lighting a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to whip our tone control upwards twice. Okay, it didn't work that time. Let's try it again. Okay, there's our four beeps. Okay, and now this tone control is adjusting our front rear speaker balance. And as long as you keep adjusting it, it'll let you keep adjusting it. And then once you're satisfied with your adjustment, you take your hand off the control, it'll wait about two seconds. And you hear one beep letting you know that setting's been saved, and now you can set that tone control back to the way you like it to sound. Okay, so now we're gonna demonstrate the line input, and I just got a quick test tone I'm gonna feed into it. Just make sure that it switches over from the radio and lets the signal come through. I'm gonna feed it into first one, aux jack, and that's our left jack. And here's our right aux jack, and we get our signal coming through there on two. So um, it's going to take 20 seconds for the radio to come back by itself. Uh, that is because of a Vox circuit it uses. It holds onto the aux input a little bit longer than it needs to, just to make sure we're not switching back and forth between songs during quiet music passages and stuff like that. If you don't like that delay, just turn the radio off, turn it right back on. The radio coming right back, no problem. There's the radio coming back by itself. Okay, and that uh, confirms that every single thing on this unit is working properly. She's ready to go to the customer. I'm ready to get on to the next job, maybe even sit down and have some supper here. So let's see if we can find my face. This is Barry with Barry's a track and Classic Car Radio Repair. I've just shown you what I can do to a Classic Car AM radio and or your 8-track players. So I don't think there's any further advertisement needs to be done on that subject. I also work on home 8-track players. Um, my website is in the description below. And my phone number is 928-533-9666. Thanks very much for watching and listening, and we'll see you next time.